Hey guys, it's Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, YouTuber. Today we are doing part two of SCP Overlord. This is an awesome, I mean I can't even call it a fan film because it, it, it's a little too, too good for that. Uh, a short film based on the SCP universe by Evan Royalty. It's free on YouTube. If you haven't watched it already, take a look at the link down below. That's absolutely what you should watch through. Um, but as you know, we are running through this part by part because it's dense and it's great and I love it. But of course, if you have ever had a paranormal encounter and you thought to yourself, I think I could shoot my way out of this, hit subscribe. And of course, like the video if you want more SCP fan film content. All right. And having done that, let's get into it. So when we left, uh, the team, uh, they were getting ready to enter and clear the house uh, where the anomalies were reported. Ooh, again, getting the details right. Did you notice how the so they're, they're stacked up just right on one side is their stack and on the opposite side is their breaching man and the breaching guy first off they're trying to maintain noise and light discipline so the first thing he does is just sees if he can open the door so they don't have to kick it they don't have to blow it right maybe they can enter and still maintain the element of surprise sure enough door is unlocked so he opens the door and then he checks the perimeter of the door for booby traps and this is actually a throwback to especially the iraq war where it would be common for insurgents to set up these basically booby trapped houses and they would try to bait soldiers and marines to enter them but they would rig up explosives around the doorway so mer so soldiers and marines would breach the door and then they would trigger an explosive and, and the breaching team would be killed uh, or wounded and so, yeah, the protocol became check the door for any signs of wires, booby traps, or explosives, right? So, and you could see sometimes it, we're not talking about really complex traps here. We're talking about like a frag grenade, like kind of taped in place or the classic like frag grenade in a soup can that kind of pops out. Um, simple stuff. But again, if you don't think to look for it, it could be really devastating. So again, great TTPs there. Uh, TTPs, by the way, is the military acronym for Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures. Those are those are are like what we're seeing here, right? Things that are too small to be considered a like doctrine. They're more like a detailed way of doing things. So a TTP might be um, like in my unit, an example was um, medical pouches uh, always on the left hip. Right, so that way, if you, if anyone in our unit got injured, we knew just look to the left hip. There's their medical pouch. Right, so that's an example like a TTP. Okay. Okay, small room. Small room left. Ah, oh, you hear them talking. They're telling the people behind them when the room is small because you don't want to crowd, you know, your your four-man element, have them all crowd into the, uh, a closet, right? That's just a, a recipe for a disaster, right? You're, you're, you've lost your spacing. It's too small to move. And so you tell the people behind you, hey, small room, small room left, right? You're communicating what you're seeing. And of course, you saw them enter with a flashbang. You see they're trying to cover all different angles, right? Somebody's covering the ceiling in the fr frame there, right? They are maintaining muzzle discipline. Muzzles are down when they enter, up when they are uh, on point or sweeping an area. Yeah, yeah, this is solid. Coming out. Coming out. Coming out. Oh, and they called coming out. That's the other thing, right? Because there's still folks in those hallways. They need to know, you know, the person in the hallway is, is pulling security, right? And they don't know what rooms are clear, what rooms aren't, or they have an idea, but it's not certain. So you have to tell them coming out, coming out so that your buddy knows not to like, bam, you know, freak out, see a person with a gun and pull the trigger. Again, just a, just a great shot, just a great indicator of, of how their, 
they must have had a military consultant and they, they got all the details right. Uh, and you saw he let his he let his battle buddy know that they were behind him using the shoulder pat like we talk about. If you got to maintain noise and light discipline, you can tell your or even if you have had like a gunfight, you know. Sometimes if you don't have ear pro or even if you do have ear pro, all those rounds can just can wash out your hearing effectively. And until it comes back, you've got to rely on touch to let your buddies know, hey, friendly's right here. I'm behind you. You can move. You've got the rest of the stack with you. So again, it's just such attention to detail here. Move it to second deck. Uh, you see, somebody's even pulling security on the roof. The the third dimension of combat, man. Ah, uh, this is yeah. I. I know there's a making of. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a react to that, if that's worth it. Because, um, yeah, I'd be curious to see more about how it was made. I got one. Put your fucking hands in the air or you will be shot. Hands. Let me do see your fucking hands. hands. Do it. Do it now. Put your hands in the air. Do it now. Clear, succinct intelligible commands that's exactly how you want to give commands to someone who is not complying right you want to give them the best chance to respond and to avoid confusion and that is an easy way to do it clear distinct hands now put your hands up put your hands up right it's a simple command do it now put your hands up do it now that's exactly what we were trained to do do it right fucking now don't you fucking do it! One one to Helios. We got a bogey down on the second floor. Proceeding to ID. Over. Okay, bogey. Bogey's. Bogey's the one thing. The only time I've heard bogey is like in '90s fighter pilot movies. Um, I, I, I think we'd probably call him a hostile. Um, yeah, yeah, a hostile probably be like one, we've got one enemy KIA, one hostile KIA, um, first floor. Yeah, that's what we'd say. And if we didn't know, if we hadn't like verified that they were killed, we'd say, uh, probably like a casualty. We'd be like one hostile, um, you know, one hostile casualty, one hostile wounded or killed. Okay, let's see. All right, so here's what I like. They know that they put that guy down, but the room isn't clear yet. They finished clearing the room before they touched him or did anything, right? So that's tactically totally sound. Um, it looks like one person's providing overwatch while the other one checks him. Um, the only thing that I don't particularly like is that if we knew that this guy was like potentially hostile, right we hadn't searched him um you may not want to have three people that close together um but I, but you see in a house there's not really a lot of space for you to take you know you can't you can't space out that much and as we discussed sometimes with cinematography you want to show uh the whole team looking at what's happening right because that helps drive the story that way you know which members of the team know what and so you may have to just show that for for cinematography reasons Pender, should be calling a Kasavak. I'm not Bashan, but those were kill shots, bro. Best thing for him's a bag. Fuck. One more to Helios. Kingpin is dead. Over. The hell was he up to? Looks like a ritual, I guess. Be nice if he didn't pull that fucking gun. Got a couple questions to ask. Like how many guns? Yeah, you notice, uh, He's, his his mask is fogging up. Um, I'm kind of surprised because you you could you could just change the shots. Um, the, yeah, that that most of the time they wouldn't let that happen. Um, 
there's a lot of techniques you can use to maintain the seal in your gas mask. Um, really not, it's not actually that hard to do. Um, especially if you've got the rebreather, you just got to make sure the rebreather and the mask seal don't run up against each other. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's an easy fix. I'm surprised they, they let that go. Guys, he's got in the basement. Push comes to shove, I can cut a hole in the floor, flush him out with gas. Cross that bridge when we get there. To you. Hang on to that. Go check out Pender's office. Take Again, uh, TL. PL is what we what what they would usually call me just informally. Hey, where's PL? Um, because for platoon leader, TL is short for team leader. Um, you notice they call them a Kazavak, right? Kazavak is is the universal term for casualty evacuation, right? I've called Kazavaks for, um, and Kazavak is any time you're evacuating a casualty. So it doesn't necessarily it, most of the time when you say we're going to Kazavak somebody. Um, your first thought is kind of with a with a rotary wing um, to call in an actual Kazavak bird to land, pick up, and go. Um, because as I've talked about in other videos, right speed, if you can get to medical attention within that uh, magic uh, golden hour window, then their chances of any anyone, if you can get to a hospital within an hour, your chances of surviving rise to like 80%, right? So... Um, Usually, Kazavak in the U.S. military is done via helicopter, but anything can be a Kazavak, right? They could sit there and say, "Hey, we're going to Kazavak this guy on one of the, commandeer one of the pickup trucks," and that pickup truck is your Kazavak vehicle. And Kazavak applies to enemy just as well as friendly. I've Kazavak enemy troops, um, you know, search the sh search the shit out of them. Um, but you know, law of war says if they're alive and they're in your custody, you have to treat them at least to the standard that you would treat your own troops. And that means calling a Kazavak. Kalinsky with you. Shot this guy, he still won't shut the fuck up. Basement doors reinforced. Some of the numbers are fitted on the lock. So we can probably brute force it. Let me have a look. Again, checking that door. Checking that door for traps. Man, just a, just a little detail you're getting right. Can you blow it? Uh, no. We need something heavy, and I don't want to risk damaging anything inside. We need a cutting torch for this one. That, or, you know, find the code. <sighs> Helios, this is Sector 1 1. Basement is reinforced. Unable to secure it at this time. Over. Just want to point out one thing that I think is pretty fun about the writing here um, is that you know you're like oh this is like a team clearing somebody's house but guess what guys every house every time you clear a house it's somebody's house right you know and this is how it is I mean if you look at at folks you know FBI is HRT right this this is the sort of stuff that they do this is the exactly the kind of house that they would have to enter breach and clear so. Um, you know, very, very realistic situation these guys find themselves in. I know you all are somewhat anxious. That's better. Looks like he was still riding. Yeah, what's he riding? The bridge over the horizon. Records on the last days of the new transcendentalist commune. What the fuck did he mean by that? Which part? Title's a novel worth of text. The part about him knowing this group was coming to an end. Intel never said they were a doomsday cult. Well, if you're the field analyst, figure it out. I'm just here as a type. Sending this to command. You know, I should have figured something was up. Yeah? Why? Well, he pulled a weapon on us. Yeah, we kind of broke into his house, Kolinsky. He could have figured us for cops. 
If we're going off his publicly available doctrine, there's no reason why he'd want to martyr himself. If he went to prison, he'd still be able to preach his ideology. That's what counts, right? I don't know, bro. I just type. Maybe they changed it at the last minute. Try Pender's birthday. I don't know. Try one, two, three, four. No. Any progress? Negative. Hell, you smoked Pender. Cicero did. Nice. Would have been nicer if you didn't, you know? So he could have told us the code. Just keep typing. Brains keep a log of all the numbers you try. If all else goes to shit, we can call in a cutting torch. You know, this is also one of those classic, like, little details uh, that happens all the time in the military, right? Is the hurry up and wait around, right? So you had this action-packed moment where you had to clear the house, right? And I'm sure everyone's adrenaline was pumping, you know, hearts are racing. And then you secure the house, and you have to sit and wait for the brute force on the lock or the cutting torch to get brought in from you know probably your your rally point or your your talk or whatever um so that's the pretty that's like classic right and at least when i was deployed a lot of it was eod um the two things that would take forever was you would either sit and wait if you found like something that you, you were reasonably sure was an ied um you would wait for i for uh, the explosive disposal teams to come out and dispose of it or, and you would also wait for wreckers. If you had a vehicle get downed or stuck, because, you know, giant heavy armored vehicles get stuck in the mud all the time in Afghanistan, um, you would wait forever for these wreckers to come out, right? Because they are an entire combat patrol. You, they've got to get spun up. So you'd be sitting there for three, four hours just waiting for these wreckers to come out. And you kind of feel like a sitting duck, right? Like you're just stuck out there and you know people see you, right? They could be calling their buddies on the phone. It's kind of nerve wracking. It's like the worst, worst of both worlds. It's incredibly nerve wracking because you're sort of out there exposed and it's super boring because there's nothing to do but pull security while you wait for someone to show up. So again, a sort of like classic military situation of hurry up and wait around. Hey, Kulinski, come here. From the flash drive I found in his room. Scepter 16 to Helios, we've got a flash drive in here with a video file titled Play Me. Proceeding to open it, over. Roger, 16, over. If you are listening to this, I have either made the journey into our Lord's domicile, or I am dead. Louis, my former colleague, has barricaded himself within the inner sanctum. has struck me like nothing else in this world. However, I would not be the first prophet to be betrayed by one so close to him. Maybe it was meant to be like this. Maybe this is the price I pay. To whom it may concern, you have made a mistake. Spooky as shit, bro. Shit. Jensen. What you got? I just want to make sure I'm not the only one seeing this. Looks like there's some sort of invisible ink. Is it just infrared that's picking it up? Negative. Jensen tried it with his nods to no effect. It's the camera, not infrared. Extra spooky. 
also appreciate the fact that they're uh, they're working through it, right? They're trying to solve solve the problem. Um, yeah, I mean, truth be told, obviously this is super paranormal, but um, weird shit happens all the damn time in in a war zone, really. And you got to be able to improvise and and figure it out um, all the time, all the time. Um, that's part of why. That's part of that like. I don't know. It's it's part of the thing that I think draws people uh, back. You know what I mean? Is the fact that you know everything's so chaotic. Your your brain sometimes have to be just like a hundred percent engaged all the time. You know to really try to solve all these problems that are coming at you. Maybe that's the anomaly, or part of it, or a trick. Helios, this is Sector One One, requesting to use the camera to investigate the property. Over. Helios, Sector 1-1, stand by. Over. Sector 1-1, you may use the camera at your own volition. Over. Understood. 1-1 out. Good find, Kalinsky. Take it and report your findings to the TORC. Jans- TORC, T-O-C, stands for Tactical Operations Center. Um, usually that means a forward deployed command post is the best way to think of it. Um, it's usually meant to command relatively, uh, comparatively small elements of troops who are engaged in maneuver. Um, it's also usually where a commander can go to get the situation of uh, his battle, his or her battlefield. Um, yeah, because they'll usually have things displayed like a map, your troops' positions, often the status of your troops and patrols, um, who's out, right? It'll, it'll give you the ability, you know, good commanders will say, okay, I want to be able to stand in my talk and look around and see, understand, without saying anything, the basics of my battle space. When I have questions, then I ask my experts, because the talk also is where a lot of your staff officers are going to sit. So they'll sit there and say, hey, S2, why are we, uh, why are we amber on fuel? And S2 will go, well, the fuel delivery truck uh, got delayed because it uh, the route went black and they couldn't uh, SP from the FOB, um, but in 12 hours they should be here once EOD clears it. He goes, okay, thanks, you know. And, and that's usually how these sort of things go. Give command control of the computer, then go with Kalinsky. Yeah, spooky as spooky as F and spooky as all get out. Um, also interesting call that it looks like it's starting to get dark, right? You can see everyone on the team brought their nods, uh, but the uh, outer cord on, outer cord on, yeah, the outer cord on is uh, at least their team lead still had his tinted glasses on. Um, normally, you would want to switch those out for your clear glasses as light as you get into low light conditions. You know, just one kind of interesting detail I like about the casting of this is that um, these aren't all six foot tall buff Hollywood actors, right? Uh, you know, there's there's short guys, there's tall guys, there's thin guys, there's stocky guys, um, and that's sort of true of both the real military and even in the special operations community. You know, you see uh, human beings just have a lot of variation, and that's going to be true of almost any military unit, right? Even if you're selecting for being in shape. Uh, and, and able to perform the tasks, there's still going to be a pretty wide set of human beings that can do it, right? Special operations is not like, say, Olympic diving, right, where there's like one exact perfect body type for it, you know? Again, there's no reason to exclude everyone under 5'8 or everyone over 6'2, right? If you can pass the training, you're in. And so, this is more like what a real team might look like, right? Short guys, tall guys, uh, you know, in contrast to maybe the like Hollywood Zero Dark Thirty, everybody's a bodybuilder uh, kind of vibe you sometimes get. They're all over the place. I probably 
more outside, too. Yeah, this is all very exciting, Kowinski. Okay, interesting. So it looks like he had some sort of comms on his wrist. And I, what I'm used to seeing on the wrist um, in that sort of wrist-mounted look-at-it type deal is usually something um, with really essential knowledge that you could need to consult immediately. So, for example, a map of your patrol route or of the area right, is a pretty classic one. I've also heard of people using putting frequencies on there, right? So it's like, hey, if you need to re raise your talk, here's the freak. If you need to raise your company, here's the freak. Here's the uh, standard um, uh, air support frequency that you can tune into. Here's your battalion freaks and here's your fire frequency, right? Um, so just essential knowledge that's, that's there that you can access that you just can't commit to memory. Um, but I, I've never seen a sort of uh, communicator there. But you notice that's what it looked like it did. It looked like he was able to do a non, looks like a nonverbal way of communicating simple information to his team lead. Probably similar to if we saw an escape from Tarkov when the enemy was really close by, right? We saw the uh, one operator instead of responding to the messages, he just clicked his mic right twice to indicate like yes i understand or no i don't this may be like a more advanced version of that all right guys i know i'm stopping at the most high tension tension part but I'm trying to do this in like sort of equal parts here, and I, I, I'm going to leave you in suspense. I'm going to leave myself in suspense, right? Um, but I, so far, again, I remain impressed with Evan Royalty's commitment to getting these things right. He really is a filmmaker who's, again, trying to show that you, don't, you can make something that's exciting, that builds tension, that's engaging, and you don't have to compromise realism. Right, you don't have to compromise uh, uh, believable tactics. And so far, man, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Please let me know in the comments below if I missed anything. If there's something in lore that I'm not fully aware of that I don't fully appreciate, um, I'm always down to learn more. Of course, like the video so you can tell the YouTube algorithm that I am not making clickbait, that I'm putting out quality information here. And, of course, please be sure to subscribe for more SCP content. Uh, I also do movies, video games, films, anything else that sort of uh, sparks my interest. Um, I'm happy to do a reaction video, too. And let me know if there's other stuff uh, you want me to take a look at. Again, all about it. And thank you guys for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.